Oh my God. It's a surreal feeling. We did it. We did it! Oh my God, we did it! The Boston Celtics year after year over the last decade have went through so much heartbreak and were so close so many times to getting to their ultimate goal. But they did what many teams were unable to do in staying patient in their dynamic duo of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. And now they reap the ultimate reward of winning an NBA championship. So let's go all the way back to the start of things when Jalen Brown got drafted in 2016. The Celtics had the third pick and when they saw he was still on the board, they of course had to take him with no hesitation. There were some knocks on his game, like the lack of left hand that everyone still talks about, but the Boston front office and coaching staff felt that they could develop him into the superstar that his ceiling was. So now the Celtics had their cornerstone shooting guard to build around, but what confused a lot of people is how after a winning season and getting the same third overall pick again in 2018 from the 76ers, why they took Jason Tatum, who had a very similar play style to Brown, out of Duke. But Boston saw the vision, and they really felt like this was the duo to build around for the future. The roster turnover continued with the culmination of a long-term pursuit of Gordon Hayward. With Hayward in the fold, that meant all of the team's free agents had to go. Multiple key contributors from 2017 were renounced. As a part of his cap space maneuvering, Ainge also traded the longest tenured Celtic, Avery Bradley, to the Detroit Pistons for Marcus Morris and his slightly smaller salary. The Celtics also used the room exception to add Morris's former Detroit teammate Aaron Baines to back up Horford. And just when it looked like the roster was set, Ainge took the biggest swing of his time leading Boston's front office. The Celtics sent the Cavaliers Isaiah Thomas, Jay Crowder, Ante Zizic, and the last of Brooklyn's first round picks for Kyrie Irving. All of the sudden, Boston had three all-stars in Irving, Hayward, and Horford, a group of solid defensive-minded vets and promising youngsters in Brown and Tatum. Visions of Banner 18 immediately began dancing in everyone's head, but opening night, those hopes came crashing down at the same time Gordon Hayward did. Five minutes into his first game with the Celtics, Hayward went up for an alley-oop and was clipped by Crowder. He landed awkwardly, and by the time the camera panned to him, his left foot was pointing in the wrong direction. It was one of the grossest things I've ever seen on live television. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. The Celtics ended up rallying to make it a competitive game, but lost in Cleveland. The next night, they dropped their home opener to the Milwaukee Bucks. It looked like a promising season was derailed as soon as it started. After a day off to regroup, Brad Stevens led his troops to their first win of the season on October 20th at the 76ers, and it'd be over a month before Boston would lose again. The Celtics won 16 straight games. All of a sudden, the questions were, just how good are these Tatum and Brown kids? And maybe, we're better off going with Bain starting. Irving was dazzling, he was providing everything Thomas did, and sometimes more. Horford's calm demeanor and all-around game was brilliant, Tatum and Brown made mistakes young players make, but infused youthful energy on a nightly basis. Smart Morris Baines and Rozier formed the backbone of a tough team, they'd happily knock you down and let you know that there was more of that coming. In late January, early February, Irving missed a few games with knee soreness. It popped back up a month later in early March. Irving missed another game, played the next one, and then a few nights later, exited after just 16 minutes against Indiana. We didn't know it right then, but Irving's season was over. The hardware in his knee from a previous surgery needed to be removed. The procedure ended Irving's first season in Boston after just 60 games. Still, in the playoffs, this group of scrappy upstarts were challenged by the Milwaukee Bucks in the first round. Each team won all the games on their home floor, ending with the Celtics rolling over the Bucks in Game 7 in Boston. Terry Rozier played the best basketball of his time in green in those wins over Milwaukee. The second round featured a test from the division rival Sixers. Boston won their first two at home, and Game 3 was a classic battle. Boston was up by two points with 1.7 seconds to play, and this happened. Here's Bellinelli, catch and shoot, and it's good! They rule it a two to see if the call on the floor was correct. Bellinelli made the shot, but he tied the game, not won it. That confetti dropped too early and gave Boston renewed life. The Celtics took a commanding 3-0 series lead with an overtime win. Two games later, Boston closed it out at home. So then Boston would be taking on LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Really, they were just facing LeBron and a bunch of role players because LeBron was that team. But there's a reason why LeBron is the greatest player of all time, and this was one of the most special individual seasons we have ever seen. But despite losing the series, the Celtics did force it to a Game 7 at home, and Jason Tatum was able to do this to LeBron. Tatum drives down, and throws it down! Wow! 
Anyways, moving on to 2019, the Celtics still had very high expectations with Kyrie coming back healthy, they were a stacked team, and before the season, Terry Rozier said, we feel like we have arrived or something, like we won something. Before the start of the season, teams know that, people are talking about us every time you turn on the TV, so that's going to motivate them to beat us. Second string, third string, it doesn't matter who it is. So we have to stay grounded and go back to playing Boston Celtics basketball and who we are instead of thinking we're above everybody. This season ended up being very event filled, and even though Boston won a lot of games, Kyrie promised he would come back, and we of course know that he did it. You guys will have me back. I plan on re-signing here next year. Boom! So. Boston did not have the playoff success they wanted, losing to the Milwaukee Bucks. So now that Kyrie was gone, all of the sudden, this was Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown's team. And little did we know, we were all in for a crazy ride. In 2020, tragedy struck the earth, so the NBA would have the bubble season. The Celtics were good and made a deep run, but lost to the Miami Heat before the finals. So a common trend was starting to happen with this team. The following season in 2021 was when people really started to question if Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum could win together. They only went 500 and lost in the first round. So coming into the 2022 season, the duo knew that things really needed to change, and fast. But on January 6, 2022, the Boston Celtics fell 108 to 105 to the New York Knicks to drop to 18 and 21 on the season and 11th in the Eastern Conference, approaching the halfway point of its season. This is when Jalen Brown would make the infamous tweet that the energy was about to change, and boy, was he right. And so was my boy Jimmy Highroller. But this was the point in the season where the duo was getting more criticism than ever. The Celtics would finish 51-31 and would make it all the way to the finals in an incredible run, but they would lose to the Warriors who revived their dynasty with the likes of Curry and Jordan Poole leading the way. So going into 2023, it was the same thing. The Celtics were a great team, but the only thing missing on Jason and Jalen's resume was a championship. The Celtics had another great regular season, but lost to the Miami Heat in Game 7 after going down 3-0 and then winning 3 straight, then getting smoked in Game 7. This was when the criticism was at an all-time high for this team. But the Celtics just kept grinding through it all and kept the same core together. And Brad Stevens, who was now working in the front office, brought in Chris Dabbs Porzingis and Drew Holiday, who both ended up being glue guys as we all know. And the Celtics would have another great season in 2024, but this time, they would get back to the finals and would win it all in 5 games against the Dallas Mavericks. And Jason and Jalen were just filled with emotion because it all really set in and how much they had to go through to get to this point. That's all I have to say for this video, please make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, thanks so much for watching, and until next time, I will see you all later.